Welcome to Top 5 Friday, guys. Tonight, we are going to be talking about my top five arcade games. Oh, it's Friday night. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. I could sit here and pick my nose while I watch a brand new video. Oh, oh. Top 5 Friday Time for Friday tonight. All right, now I did a video on my top five arcade light games once before, but I have not covered regular arcade, so to speak, and that's what tonight's video is going to be all about. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? All right, number five, we got Kicks, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's Q I X, Q I X. Uh, basically, the point of this game is to <sighs> almost burp the point of this game is to cover up as much of the playing field as possible um, without getting hit you've got little things moving around on the screen and the outlines that you draw trying to get you and you have this kind of line spectrum thing moving around that if it touches the line that you're trying to draw then you lose life so, for example, let's say right at the beginning, stage number one, you can usually draw a line right up the middle without uh, being hit, probably like 99 times out of 100. Well, the side that this little squiggly line thingy is on um, is going to stay uncolored, so it will color red, green, yellow even, different colors, and you have a percentage that you have to cover up on the map. Uh, once you hit that percentage, let's say it's 60%. Once you hit that, any percentage you have over it, uh, those are your bonus points. So if you cover up 65%, then you get 5,000 bonus points. Now you can't hit 60% and keep going. Once you hit that 60% threshold, that's it. So if you're going for points, what you want to do is kind of get right up to that line and then try to get a big piece of the screen covered up so you can get a bunch of bonus points. Um, I actually first played this on the NES and that's the thing is I know arcade machines are expensive, but this did have a port on the NES, did have a port on the Game Boy, and I first played it on the NES and I actually really fell in love with it. And then I actually was able to play this at an arcade and it's the exact same concept. On the NES, you hold B, the line moves slower, you get more points if you're able to you know, connect the dots, so to speak. Um, I think this is a super unique game and I have a ton of fun playing it and that's why I wanted to put it on this list. Number four, number four. Number four, Mario Brothers, just Mario Brothers, not the Super Mario Brothers. Um, a lot of people don't know that there was actually just a game released on the arcade called Mario Brothers, no super in front of it. And basically it's a platformer, you got different platforms, you got enemies coming out of pipes on the top, you hit them from beneath and then you, once they die, you jump up, you get them, and that's how you score points. Uh, clear all the enemies designated for that level, and you move on to the next one. It's actually really good co-op fun as well. Um, this game was actually one of the original black box games, and I love this thing on the NES. And that's just a cheaper alternative for you guys to be able to go and pick this thing up, because again, arcades are expensive. Um, they also have a mini game in uh, Super Mario Bros. 3, um, and they have a mini game as well it's actually a battle mode uh kind of thing in the super mario brothers 3 on um the lost levels cartridge on super nintendo this is one of my favorite games i like to you know it's 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 fun if you're kind of playing with someone and you can play it different ways again in the battle mode it's you know collect five coins or uh kill your opponent basically in the battle mode on the super nintendo version um if you play it on the arcade, that's not necessarily a true mode on it. You can kind of make it one if you want, but more so than anything, it might just annoy the person that's trying to play with you. Um, I just, I've always loved this game from the beginning, from the first time I ever played this thing on NES and playing it in arcade, the experience is, is e even better in my opinion. Mm. This one's tough. This one's tough. This one's tough. Number three, Tapper. I love this game, and this is a more recent love for me on this game. I love this game for many different reasons. Um, the arcade is unique. It actually has, so the point of the game is you're a bartender, and you've got, you know, bars, and you got people coming out saying, give me a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
You pour the beer, you send it down the line, you send them back into their hole from whence they came. Uh, once you clear everybody off of here, then you go on to the next level. Excuse me. Mm. <clears throat> Make sure you edit all this dumb shit out, dude. So what's so unique about this game right here is not just the gameplay, which is super, super fun, but it's the arcade cabinet itself. Now, this game was originally called Budweiser Tapper, and it was it was sponsored by, well, Budweiser, King of Beers, right? And it literally said Budweiser, and these machines were made to go into actual bars with adults. Um, and the porters, you actually have a, a like a, a tap, like you would pour on a... A beer tap, you have one of those, and that's how you pour the beers and send them down the way. Um, what else is unique about it? It has kind of cup holders on the side as well, and it actually has a footrest bar on the bottom. The machine itself is unique. Uh, it, the machine itself is fun to look at, but playing the game even more so, and the backstory is why I put this on, on my list. So because they felt they were missing out on the kids' demographic, because you can't advertise alcohol to minors, which is why they were in actual bars, they later changed it to Root Beer Tapper to go into your average, regular, everyday arcade. Again, this is a newfound love of mine, and I, I I can't get enough of it, if I'm being honest. But if you want a cheaper alternative, the Midway Classics Greatest Hits on Nintendo 64 has Root Beer Tapper on it. Number two, Miss Pac-Man. I personally like Miss Pac-Man better than Pac-Man. I think the maps are designed a little bit better. Um, and, and now, okay, keep in mind that my playing of Miss Pac-Man recently has been with the speed chip installed, but it's super, super fun. It's almost a little more challenging with the speed chip. Um, you might miss a turn. You might miss a turn that might make you go into a ghost. Uh, that's the way I've been playing with it. Any any arcade around here that has it has a speed chip installed. Uh, me personally, that's the way I prefer to play Miss Pac-Man. Um, I think Miss Pac-Man, again, the level designs are better than Pac-Man in my opinion. Uh, the ghosts seem to be a little more... I think the AI might be about the same, honestly. Um, and Miss Pac-Man is just sexier than Pac-Man. It's a super fun game. Uh, I like to challenge myself on this one. Uh, my high score, while not super amazing, uh, is about 165, 165,000 points. I don't know if that's good or not. Put your point total down below for any of these games I'm mentioning and, you know, see if you're better than me at video games. You might be. I'm sure a lot of you are, but there's not a whole lot I can say about Miss Pac-Man. It's a sequel to Pac-Man. Um, personally, again, I think it's better. I've said that way too many times now, but I'm saying it again. Uh, it's just sheer, pure fun. And I can never, ever get enough of this if I go into an arcade. Anytime I was growing up and going to any kind of um, uh, laundromat or anything, or if I was a pizza joint that had it, you know I was going to put quarters into this machine, and it's no different today. Holy moly! Number one. Number one. Number one. Donkey Kong. Um, that might be a little, you know, there might be a couple of games on here where it's like, oh, okay, sure, yeah, it's going to be on there. Well, that's because they're awesome, and Donkey Kong falls into that awesome category. Donkey Kong is one of those games that I've actually began to recently get pretty good at. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not breaking any records or anything like that, like by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the other day, I think I hit a high of like 105,000 points. So to get, to get six figures on that, when, you know, maybe before I hit 20, <laughs> 25,000, something like that, I was actually super excited about that. I like this game. Well, it, it's, it's classic. It's fun. It is actually a challenging game. It challenges you to uh, learn patterns for the barrels, if there are any. And there are. It challenges you to learn how to manipulate barrels if you want them to come down a certain ladder. And you can. Um, there's so much challenge to this game. There's so much strategy to this game. There's so many different ways to rack up points if that's what you're trying to go for. Um, the Pie Factory, it does take a minute to get there. And in other ports like the NES, and this was an original black box game on the NES, the Pie Factory is not there. So you miss out of, on that with, with home consoles and whatnot. Uh, it was also on, this is might be a little bit cheaper, uh, the Donkey Kong Classics, uh, which had Donkey Kong and I think Donkey Kong Jr. on it maybe on NES. So if you want a cheap alternative, 
NES version, um, unfortunately, again, you're not going to get that Pie Factory in it. But the 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 challenge ability <laughs> that this game presents uh, is why this game is at the top of my list. And all the games can be challenging, but this one, you really you got to stay on your toes. It keeps you on your toes. Um, and again, finding new ways to continue to, to make your score grow is in my opinion half the fun of it and recently i think i've gotten pretty pretty damn good if i must say so myself but you want all my but anyways donkey kong is going to top my list because i mean it's donkey kong and i didn't need to go into great detail but i did because you guys aren't gonna sit here and just let me go kicks mario brothers tapper you know what I'm saying? So there's my list. There's my top five. Put your top five arcade games down below. Uh, not Light Gun. That's a completely different category in my opinion. And not Racing, because that's another category. And maybe I make that video on racing games, racing arcade games as well. But put your top five arcade games down below. I went mainly for solo stuff. You know, I love Turtles. You know, the Turtles, Turtles in Time, arcades and whatnot. But I went, I wanted to go mainly solo stuff. And that game is way more fun uh, with multiple players. And that could be another video, actually. Top five multiplayer games. Oh, yeah. I like it. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.